Hi everyone and welcome to the Better Everyday YouTube channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Randy. So today we are going to be watching the rest of the Dave Chappelle special called For What It's Worth. Last week I recorded or reacted to the first half and paused it. And so today I'm planning on watching through the rest of it. I'm excited. It made me laugh a couple times. One thing, if you didn't watch the first half, the special is a little bit older. I think it's from like 2002 or something. I might be wrong. I knew what year it was until just now. Uh, but some of the things that he has talked about, I wasn't super familiar with because at the t this time, I wasn't really completely aware of everything that was going on uh, in the world and in the United States. I was either a teenager or an early college, somewhere around there. And so I was kind of in my own world and just getting kind of fragments of what was going on. Anyway, uh, I'm excited, so let's go. I spoke at my old high school and I told them kids straight up, if you guys are serious about making it out of this ghetto, you got to focus, you got to stop blaming white people for your problems, and you've, you've got to learn how to rap or play basketball or something, nigga, you're trapped. You are trapped. Either do that or sell crap. That's your only option. That's the only way I've ever seen it work. You better get to entertaining these white people, nigga. Get to dancing. Go on out there and be somebody. I love his energy. I just hope they listen. <laughs> <laughs> shit is ridiculous. People worship television. They worship this shit. Mm. You know, like, if you watch a movie, right? Say you're watching a movie, and one character says to another character, say, hey, uh, what's your number, man? What's the other character always say? Five, 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 five. You know why we gotta do that? Because stupid ass people go to the movies and then go home and try to call the characters that they just saw. Hello, is Indiana Jones here? No, motherfucker, he's fake. It's not his number. <laughs> and to be honest, this is the worst time in history to be a black celebrity. Fuck, they locking all our stars up. It's hot right now for black celebrities. I knew it was bad when Kobe got in trouble. I said, this is a rap for us. He's one of the most wholesome dudes we had. We lock him up and everything. And Kobe kept it together. Thank God he, he held his game together because if he was cracking under pressure and getting like six points a game, the whole L.A. would have been like, that nigger is guilty. <laughs> Kobe was playing his ass off. He was playing like his... Freedom depended on that shit. You see this motherfucker in them games? This nigga's trying to beat that case on the court. Ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with what happened to Kobe. I assume he's talking about Kobe Bryant. Like the judge threw him the ball, like play for your freedom. I'm not sure what happened. If I could talk to Kobe, I'd be like, just relax, you'll be fine, man. Because the public is still giving Kobe the benefit of the doubt. He's one yeah. of the few black celebrities that get that. Not because mm. he's a celebrity, more because, you know, the girl showed up with eight different semens to the investigation. You can't do that. Uh, uh, That's seven too many. Sexual misconduct, That's I guess. a lot of semen, man. This bitch got Noah's Ark and her panties. I wish she trying to recreate humanity or something. Oh. She's a collector. Yeah. Gross. She got every unsolved mystery. The answer might be in this girl's paint. Oh, no. That's the first place I look. <laughs> OJ's other gloves in there. Oh. Bigfoot's footprint. Oh. Three CSI reruns in there. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched CSI last night. That's funny. She got the most diabolical draws ever. Mm. Fuck being a celebrity. It's not the time to be a black star. They locking all our stars up. Black celebrities, this is a witch hunt for us, man. God damn it. It's all OJ's fault. <laughs> Ever since OJ got away, white people have just been locking up our stars one mm. by one. It's true. I am familiar with OJ. Even when I was young, that was something my parents talked about. I mean, I know more about it now that I'm an adult and have actually like read about it, watched documentaries um, and such. Um, Sorry for the random pause. I had to, or f sorry if the video jumped. I had to pause to uh, do something for my kids. Anyway, moving on. And it's all, it's not even OJ's fault. It's our fault. We celebrated too openly when OJ got acquitted. We should have been quiet about that shit. 
As soon as it's not guilty, nigga, just dance. Oh, in your face, nigga, in your face. It hurts, don't it? It hurts. Burns, doesn't it, nigga? Ooh, that justice system burns, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome to my world, motherfucker, all that shit. White people wanted OJ's ass bad. City of L.A. spent over $12 million just trying that motherfucker. Wow. And the look on white people's face when he was acquitted, priceless. <laughs> priceless. What year was that? And that's why I don't trip off of being a celebrity. I don't like it. I don't trust it. There's one minute they all love you, and the next thing you know, in front of that courthouse, dancing on top of a car, just trying to figure out what the fuck happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know what he's talking about. MJ. I think. That's what I'm waiting for, because the timing of this Michael Jackson shit is what makes me doubt it. Every time there's war is going out of control, or the economy gets bad, or something is wrong with the world at large, it's always these moments in history that... Michael Jackson will coincidentally jerk off a kid. This is getting a little ridiculous. Like, are you planning this shit? Do you have meetings? Mm -hmm. Michael, thank you for coming. As you know, Michael, the war has not been going as well as we expected. There's been a lot of hiccups, and the public is asking us a lot of questions, of course. And, mm -hmm. Well, Michael, there's no nice way to say this, and all I know how to do is be direct, so let me just be direct. We're gonna need you to jerk off another child, Mike. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But it would really help out. Or maybe he did it. Who knows? Who knows? That's the thing. That's what I wanted to say. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Mike, God, and this little boy know. That's that's about it. Yeah. That's about it. Mm. Only reason that I can even talk about this shit is because everybody is speculating they all think he did it and i don't think he did it i'm alone in this i don't think he did it i'm not gonna say i don't think he did it that's too strong <laughs> <laughs> let me just say i am reserving judgment <laughs> until all the facts come out yeah but so far from what i heard i mean the kid said he was dying of cancer he was in make a wish foundation he claims he had two weeks to live and it was his dying wish to meet Michael Jackson. Come on, man, give me a fucking break. This kid is 10 years old, he don't remember Thriller. The fuck you wanna meet Michael Jackson for, honestly? Mm -hmm. I remember Thriller and I just like kinda wanna meet this nigga. Like, I wouldn't break an appointment to meet him, I'll put it that way. I have to already be free. <laughs> That's ridiculous, it's like if I'm dying in two weeks and go, oh, mama, oh, get me in a room with Chubby Chuckle. I wouldn't wanna meet that motherfucker. Not my last two weeks, why not Usher or somebody like this? So then the kid claims he goes to Michael's house. This is where it all gets crazy. I don't, like, you know, he does everything you'd expect at Michael's house. They uh, yeah. climb trees and rode roller coasters and Ferris wheels. Yeah. Chef made cookies, pies and cakes. They was petting them yeah. up in the draft. Sing yeah. songs, kid shit. Fun and stuff. in the middle of all this childlike activity, for some reason, Mike pulled out some wine and some pills <laughs> and sucked this kid's dick. <laughs> Folks, it hurts me to say it. Yeah. And the kid had the nerve to call that abuse. Said, Motherfucker, that is a good host. God damn, what else do you want? What else do you want? Oh. I'm lucky to get a glass of a, a white drink at my friend's house. <laughs> I was on a roller coaster ride and my dick sucked. Mike must be confused, like, I brought you in my house, I fed you, I sucked your dick, and this is how you were paid me, <laughs> This was your wish, that man. Thought you were dying in two weeks. What happened to that motherfucker? Like, yeah. I've been in court for a year and a half. You get strong every time I see you. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that... <laughs> this is fucked up. I can't say this fuck. Wouldn't it be some ironic shit? if they found out through this case that the cure for cancer was Michael Jackson sucking your dick somehow. <laughs> so bad. Like if Mike had powers like Green Mile and all the kids like, please Mike suck our dicks, mm, never again. <laughs> he didn't appreciate it. 
what he's saying right now, there was this compilation, compilation, compilation. I had done a reaction to a month or so ago, might have been two months ago, and it was Dave Chappelle basically talking about celebrities, I think, and I think this might have been in that because it sounds familiar. Um, anyway. Can we at least study your saliva? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Please, Mike. <laughs> this just doesn't stop, though. It just doesn't stop. And the only reason I can talk about Mike is because he's a freak. He's a freak. That's why people let you talk about him, because if I brought up Catholic priest fucking kids, it'd get quiet as shit. But, <laughs> but when Michael Jackson does it, it's okay because he's a freak. His face is all cut up. But just remember, when you look at that thing that he calls his face, <laughs> that he did that for you somehow. <laughs> somehow he thought you might, maybe it'll help. Maybe people will like me more if I turn myself into a white, ghoulish-like creature. I don't know what the fuck it is, but he did it for you. And I appreciate the gesture, Michael Jackson, if you're watching this. I appreciate that gesture, and I want you to know, fuck everybody, Dave Chappelle understands. Because you want to know something? I'm getting some work done. Surprise, yes. <laughs> Nothing major. You would never know if I didn't tell you, but it's some shit I'm insecure about that I want to work on. Huh. If you must know, I'm getting Botox done on my balls to get these wrinkles out. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> they just smooth as eggs. <laughs> no, I can't wait. Can you do that? I cannot wait. And I'm not stopping there. That's just phase one, baby. Uh -oh. I'll be like Bob Vila, these old balls. I'm fixing them up. <laughs> Plucking all the hair out. <laughs> I gotta make room. I know this. I gotta make room. I'm gonna tattoo a gangster ass face on mean expressions like this. And then I'll grow the hair back on the bottom so they got beards like me. <laughs> you can't tattoo that, can you? And I'm hitting that beach and looking for ball suckers. I'm gonna wear some high shorts just like this. Oh. And walk up to women with a confidence I've never had before. Pardon me, miss. I don't mean to be rude. But do you suck balls? <laughs> Excuse me? Miss, relax. You didn't even let me finish. <laughs> do you suck these balls? <laughs> oh, my God. Those balls are as smooth as eggs. <laughs> yes, I'll suck them. <laughs> I've played this scenario out in my mind a million times, lady. That's how it always ends. <laughs> Yes, I'll suck those balls. All our stars, all our stars, man. Our Kelly pissed on his victim. <laughs> I know, it was rough. But I mean, again, I can't even judge our Kelly. First of all, we don't know if these allegations are true or not, and even if they are true, if you want to know how I feel about it honestly, if a man cannot pee on his fans, I don't want to be in show business anymore because well, that's why I got in the game, baby. I got dreams, too. I do remember on uh, Chappelle's show, he had done an R. Kelly skit. At least one. I vaguely remember seeing it. I don't even remember what all it consisted of. But I think it was him saying, like, I want to piss on you or something. I'm going to have to go back and look. You guys are confusing the issue. Why you guys are busy worrying about if R. Kelly even peed on this girl or not, you're not asking yourself the real question that America needs to decide once and for all. And that question is, how old is 15 really? <laughs> no, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'm not saying that a person is as smart as they're going to be at 15. That's not what I'm saying, man. But I am saying 15 to me it's old enough to decide whether or not you want to be pissed on. I mean, that's me. If you can't make a decision like that by the time you're 15, then just give up, motherfucker, because life is way harder than that. 
I make tougher decisions all the time. If you don't want to get pissed on, just get the fuck out of the way. It's not even a decision. <laughs> if I stop peeing on the front row, they're not going to have to calculate and think, oh, how do I feel about this? Am I okay with it? They just move. <laughs> you can do that at 15. I, I could have. Mm -hmm. I've been 15. When I was 15, I was doing stand-up in nightclubs. I smoked reefer from time to time. Friends were selling crack. I was trying to finger fuck people. I knew what was happening around me. <laughs> like I just slice to it some in degree. There. Getting pissed on was the least of my worries at 15. Mm. Trust me. But it keeps coming up. There's a lot of confusion around that age. Anytime 15 comes up, people freak out. Like when that girl Elizabeth Smart got kidnapped. Right? Remember in Utah last year, 15 year old girl Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped. And then they finally found her, and the whole country was relieved. And I was the only one saying, damn, she wasn't that smart after all. Not because she got kidnapped. That could happen to anybody. I'm not knocking her for that. I'm just saying, if you kidnapped me when I was 15, you got to take me further than eight miles away from my house, man. God damn. You can't hold me prisoner around shit I recognize. I'll break away. I'll, I'll break away. Yeah. Fuck off me, nigga. That's my bus stop. I know where I'm at. I'm going <laughs> home. <laughs> She was missing for six months, eight miles away from my house. That's two exits, man. That's nothing. Yeah. And while she was missing, during this half a year that this girl was missing, there's a seven-year-old black girl gets kidnapped in Philadelphia. Nobody knows her name. They might have talked about it two or three times on the news, but she should have been the top story. Yeah. Because she chewed through the ropes and had both of these motherfuckers in jail in 45 minutes flat, seven years old. I'm not making this up. These two crackheads kidnapped her and took her back to the crack house and tied her up. And then they left her. These are crackheads. They got to make moves. Crack, smoke, chocolate, eat. These motherfuckers made moves. It was out. But as soon as they left, this little girl got the nibble. That's really smart. She kidnapped at 4 o'clock and at home watching herself on the news at 5.30. Yeah. That shit is crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's a news story. Yeah. That is a news story. Now. Yeah, I would have... I would expect that to be all over the news. I never heard about that. Of course, I was a lot younger during this time. Uh, that is wild. That is impressive that she was able to do that. Meanwhile, in Utah, the rope and get out. 15 year old Elizabeth Smart's captors left her alone too. And they didn't even tie her up because they're hillbillies. They just bounced. Don't try to escape, bitch, or we'll kill you. <laughs> be right back. Leave. She's 15, sitting in the house by herself. How am I gonna get out of this? Come on, Elizabeth, think. Think, Elizabeth, how am I gonna get out of here? Why don't you just open the fucking door and go outside? Yeah. Have you thought about that? I was about to say. Do you have a quarter? Do you know your phone number? You're 15, bitch, run! Stop thinking and stop making moves! Yeah. I know I sound mean, and I know what the people are thinking when I'm saying this. Dave, she's only 15. All right, but that's the discrepancy, because when you talk about a little girl like Elizabeth Smart, then the country feels like 15 is so young and so innocent. On the flip side, here comes 15 again. Now we're talking about a 15-year-old black kid in Florida. This black kid accidentally killed his neighbor when he's practicing wrestling moves that he saw on TV. Now, was he a kid? No. They gave him life. They always try our 15 year olds as adults. The snigger knew what he was doing. For an so accidental. goddamn pile driver. If this kid gets on the ropes, there's no stopping him. You'd have to send the rock to arrest him. And they gave a 15 year old boy life in jail. For if accident? you think that it's okay to give him life in jail, and it should be legal to pee on them. That's all I'm saying. You got to make up your mind across the board how old 15 actually is. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. So I'm going to tell you right now, if somebody comes in here and puts a gun to my head and says, Chappelle, you got a choice to make. You're either going to jail for a month or we'll let you go, but you got to let R. Kelly pee on you. <laughs> I'm not hesitating. Bring in R. Kelly and tell him to stay away from my ass. <laughs> I'd rather get pissed on on the outside than fucking the butt on the inside, so. <laughs> I can't go to jail with some smooth Botox balls and think everything's gonna be all right. It's not that kind of place. 
take my chance with that piss. Piss will wash off with a 10 minute shower, I'm certain of it. This piss yeah. coming right out. <laughs> what can I do? They're gonna put me in jail. Society is changing rapidly. Can't smoke indoors. What the fuck is that all about? Yeah. I got kicked out of titty ball for smoking. <laughs> no, that shit was ridiculous. So the stripper did it. The stripper came up like, your smoking is a health risk for me. I don't want to work in this kind of environment. <laughs> Spit you have your gonorrhea infested pussy in my face. You started it. <laughs> They threw me out. It's the dirtiest place I've ever been thrown out of. And just to give you an idea of what I mean by dirty, lap dances at this place, three dollars. It's fucking disgusting. And at the same time, who could pass up a sale, son? It was three dollars. <laughs> of course I did it. It's only 12 quarters. Said so I'll break a five for that. <laughs> never seen somebody work this hard for three dollars this lady must have been a throwback to the great depression she was all over me <laughs> it's the first time i ever told a stripper to get off me <laughs> all right yeah thank you very much miss thank you that'll be all <laughs> that's enough thank hey hey get off of me <laughs> whatever happened to lipstick on the collar lady i have a shit streak on the middle of my shirt <laughs> How the fuck am I gonna explain this when I get home? <laughs> huh? Oh no, baby, me and Bob were playing basketball and Bob dunked on me, he was hanging on the rim and his pants fell down. I was checking him close, I think he was swinging and his butt cheeks might have, uh, uh, his butt cheeks I think caught my shirt. I don't know why I was playing ball in my dress shirt. I just was, it was midnight, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Just let me think. That's when, that's when you know a guy's lying if you say shit like that. Hold on, just let me think. <laughs> we made him say that to you. Hold on, just let me think for a minute. Can I, can I think? <laughs> well, y'all women, man, you guys, you guys just made too much progress too fast. Not too much, but you just, you're confused by, you made so much progress, you even confused. Men and women, we both like, what the fuck just happened? Cause women got all this money now, but they still like women. Like, oh, you never take me anywhere anymore. And the dude be thinking, bitch, you got more money than me. You never take me anywhere anymore. Yeah. And at the same time, you don't treat a man like a man. You don't cook, you don't clean, and you don't do anything a motherfucker says. You tell a motherfucker what to do. I see women doing this to men all the time. Come on! <laughs> no man wants that shit. So when anybody that tell me what to do that much, you gotta work with me. Like if it makes a man feel like a man to watch the game, then just let him sit there and watch the game for a minute. Yeah. And if he happens to look over at you while he's watching the game, don't look at him all mean and make him feel guilty about watching it. <laughs> just pick up your own titty and suck it. Just try it out. <laughs> he will instantly remember why he fell in love. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Forgot my girl sucks her own titties from time to time. I can't walk away from that. It's too hard to find. You see, that took 20 seconds. He's still gonna be as busy as he wants. Just suck your own titties and everything's cool. Well, how about this? If you're making love to your man, you already make love, might as well spice it up, right? How about this? I personally like it. I like it when a girl tells me where to come. Don't like it when a girl tells me when to come. I hate that shit. <laughs> Don't come yet. Oh, bitch, all these rules. <laughs> I like this reenactment. Instead of doing that, why don't you just tell us where? It's make us feel better, especially mm. if you're aggressive about it. I like when a girl goes, wow, what? come in my face. Stick your chin out like a boxer. <laughs> Bring it on, motherfucker. You're a bum. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that 
that wild or explicit. That's a, I, look, all a man wants to know is that you're interested and that you're participating. You can say anything, he'll be happy. Say, oh, oh, come on top of the television. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the a weirder one. the place, the better. Oh, come in my fishbowl. Damn, fishbowl. <laughs> oh, shit, they're eating it. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> Fish love it when I come over. I know, I'm pausing. Oh, it's almost over. Well, let me say this so I don't forget. I don't something about Dave Chappelle, something about his energy or his delivery or maybe his aura, which I guess is energy. He feels like a friend. Uh, him telling, talking about, you know, going on the fishbowl or on the TV or whatever. He's in the joke itself. Like, he's not just telling us a joke. It's like he's telling himself the joke too, if that makes sense. And there's something about the way that he is speaking and delivering and you know, body language also that makes it feel like he's just talking to a friend, you know, like you are his friend and just having a giggle with him, if that makes sense. Maybe it does, maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> Fish love it when I come over. Oh, it's that guy. We're having chicken tonight. You guys, man, thanks, man. It's been the best of your you my career. You at the end? By far. I appreciate you guys watching me. What can I do for my kids, brother? And my kids are off the hook. You, you think I'm a bad motherfucker? Wait till you see the 2000 model Chappelle. This nigga is off the hook. My son's a band. My oldest son is three. This nigga made me a necklace out of macaroni. I said, this shit is a baller. He painted the macaroni green and put it on a string. He tied it on my neck and he told me he was proud of me. And I got choked up. That's and he sweet. thought I was sad. That's how smart he was. He says, are you sad, daddy? And I said, no, I'm not sad. You're too young to understand this, son. But this is fucking crazy. You used to live in my balls, man. <laughs> now you making jewelry out of macaroni. You a bad motherfucker. Long live Chappelle's. I didn't know that people did mic drops way back when. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, but... I'm trying to let it keep playing just in case he says anything else, but I don't want the music to get me in trouble. There was one special of his that I watched that had um, a song playing DMX or something in it. Got a copyright claim. Oh, he's coming back. Sorry. Let's see. Is he going to say something? I knew I shouldn't turn it off yet. There's still oh, shit. over a minute left. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That's what it's all about. Everybody usually wants to be famous so they can rock nice jewelry and all that shit. Nigga, I already got a macaroni necklace. I got valuable shit. I got, I got valuable shit. I'm not in it for that. Only kind of shit I want to do with fame that's like decadent is I want to go to Vegas to the $5,000 blackjack table. And I don't even want to play. I just want to be such a big star that I could go up to one of the players in a tight hand and put my dick on this show. <laughs> and I'm such a celebrity, they think it's, it's funny. Hey, what the fuck? Oh, shit, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> wow. And get on the cell phone, you are not going to believe whose dick is on my shoulder. And this guy's balls are smooth as ass. <laughs> He's had some work done. Couldn't thank you enough. God bless you all, man. Keep watching me. I'm going to try to make it interesting. Stay safe. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> I'm rich. 
I remember that from Chappelle's show. Oh, that was good. I don't know if I've seen anything, any of his older specials. If you hadn't watched my channel before, I watched his last special, which I think is called The Closer. Um, I didn't watch that as a reaction. I just watched that on my own time. And that's what kind of initiated me watching him on the channel. Um, it's so cool to see how he's kind of the same in some ways, like watching this, The Closer and then watching this special for what it's worth. In many ways, he is the same. But in other ways, he has uh, he's changed slightly, but it's it's still the same kind of energy and just I don't know I don't have words right now. I enjoyed that. Let me know what your your favorite Dave Chappelle specials are. Um, I know some of you had recommended his Netflix specials. If and when I react to those, there may not be a video here for those because Netflix doesn't seem to let me um, do that. But I enjoyed it. What's your favorite part from this special and what's your favorite other special from Dave Chappelle? Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Have a good one.